chapter 41. Now that whole chapter is in the devil. That's 34 verses. That's the longest chapter in the Bible on the Satan. That's the longest one. So it's the most disbelieved chapter in the entire Bible. The new Bible say Leviathan, crocodile, hippopotamus, elephant, God knows what. And scripture of the scripture, you couldn't possibly miss who that is. 41.1, canst thou drive Leviathan with a hook? All right, turn to Isaiah 27. Notice if you couldn't find a bowling ball in a bathtub, you couldn't miss finding Leviathan. You couldn't, you couldn't miss finding Leviathan. You couldn't hit the broad side of a bar with a bunch of bananas. But they miss it. They miss it. Isaiah 27.1. Isaiah 27.1. Isaiah 27.1. In that day, the Lord with his sword and great and strong sword shall punish Leviathan, the piercing what? Even Leviathan, that crooked what? And shall slay the what? That can't be done what it is at all. Leviathan is the devil. Psalm 74. Anybody, I don't guess anybody having, has a new King James Bible on them, do they? I don't guess I'd be asking too much. I'd be asking for a miracle. <laughs> Or an ASV or something. But you get one of those and look what the margin note says in those things. Psalm 74, verse 13. Made progress. I noticed in town coming to church this morning, I drove down the highway and I saw a church up there in the, on a, what is that church up there? Hillcrest up there. And a big sign out in front says, Bible study, 945. Preaching service, 11 o'clock. Now do you realize how much improvement that is? I mean, all those churches used to have Sunday school, 9.45, worship service, 11 o'clock. Now there comes Bible study, 9.45, preach, ah, good, man, good. All right, Psalm 7, of course, they're probably not doing it, but it's a good gesture. <laughs> Psalm 74.13, Psalm 74.13. Thou didst divide the sea by thy strength, thou breakest the heads of the dragons in the waters. Thou breakest the heads, plural, of what? The Leviathan. You ever see a crocodile more than one head? Heads. That thing got more than one head. You read over there in Revelation, had seven heads. All right, Job chapter 41. There's no doubt about who Leviathan is if you compare Scripture with Scripture. Job 41.1, canst thou draw Leviathan with a hook? Or his tongue with a cord which thou let us down. Well, that's what you do in catching a fish. Canst thou put a hook into his nose or bore his jaw through with a thorn? It's an aquatic animal. Whatever this thing is, it's in the water. Verse 7. Canst thou fill his skin with barred irons or his head with fish spears? That thing? An aquatic animal. A reptilian, amphibian. Verse 33. Now, I'll come back next week and come down to a verse at a time, but you want verse 33 and 34 to identify it for certain. Upon earth there is not his like who is made without fear. That cannot be any ordinary animal. Every animal on this earth fears something. Every animal. Elephants are afraid of mice. You take a lion, a lion is a fearless animal, but I'll guarantee to get a bunch of drummers after him out there in the bushes and the natives go after him and beat drums for him. They run ahead of the drummer that's trying to get away. There's no such thing an animal down here without fear, but this has no fear. Look at that past back there. She hardened it against her young ones, and oh, as though they were not hers, and her labor is in vain, without fear. For God the priver of wisdom, be that understanding. The thing that characterized the devil is his uh, lack of understanding. He got wisdom. The devil is wise or an angel of light. Boy, the devil got all the wisdom there is out so that the Lord doesn't have, but he didn't have any understanding. 33, upon earth is there not his like who is made without fear. He beholdeth all high things. That ain't no crocodile. He is a king over all the children of pride. That ain't no crocodile. He's a king over all the children of pride. That's the devil. Isn't that a thing to say to Job? Job was proud. Job was trusting his righteousness. Lord, finish that thing he says to Job. He said, you know who your daddy is? 
If you're proud, you know who your daddy is? Your dad is a devil. <clears throat> All right, we'll close there and I'll start. Now, this is the greatest chapter in the Bible on the devil. And it has more verses in it on the, about the devil than any other uh, chapter in the entire Bible. So naturally, all the scholars mess it up, and all of them got it all screwed up, and they've got this Leviathan as a whale and a crocodile and God knows what. And uh, the new pulpit commentary says that uh, nearly all the scholars agree now Leviathan is the crocodile. There's any way in God's earth you make out Leviathan the crocodile without changing everything you're reading. Now let me show you an example. Uh, coming down here in the in the passage, look at verse uh, 33. Upon earth there is not his like who is made without fear. Don't tell me a crocodile is made without fear. You can scare the fire. You can throw something at him and run him off. A crocodile may get you when you're out in his water and he's hungry and you're not armed to defend yourself. You go out shooting them, I'll guarantee they'll run for their lives. Made without fear. Why? People, we have people that jump in the water and wrestle with cro crocodiles and alligators. All right, verse 34, he is king over all the children of pride. That's a crocodile? A crocodile is king over the children of pride? Verse 19, out of his mouth go burning lamps and sparks of fire leap out. Do you see a fire-breathing croc? That's a croc. <laughs> all this stuff, look at verse 10. None is so fierce that dare stir him up. Why should there so fierce to dare stir him up? The natives in Africa hunt him and kill him and skin him and eat him. You know, so dare, fierce dare stir him up. So a fellow said this crocodile, he got a problem. And of course the real problem is in Psalm 74, you're told the violent has more than one head. That makes it real embarrassing. Then you're told in, Levitic, in Isaiah chapter 27 that he's called a serpent and a dragon. No doubt about what Leviathan is. Leviathan's the devil. But when you begin to talk about a fire-breathing dragon that's red, turn to Revelation chapter 12, then you get on ground that a modern scholar has to get off of. He can no longer go that way. Because that's mythology. That's legend. That's horror. That's not scientific. See, so all of them abandon ship. They all get off. They all get off. The Liberty Bible Commentary from Liberty College, Jerry Firewell, said this is a crocodile. Scared him out. NIV says crocodile. Scared him out. Put them all together. Put them all in this room. Put in this room the division committees for the NIV, the new ASV, the ASV, the RV, the RSV, Moffat, Weymouth, Goodspeed, Living Bible, New Liberty Bible, all the faculty there and all the staff, and I'll stick my tongue out and wiggle my ears at them. Amen. And I have a good conscience about it. Amen. As far as I'm concerned, they're just a bunch of weak need sisters, a bunch of sissies. You know what they can't stand? They can't stand ridicule. They can't stand to be made fun of. I've had to put ridicule and mockery all my life. It's just a staple diet to me is three glasses of water a day. Why these fellows can't pull up with it, I don't know. People making fun of you. What do you care making fun of you? What's that, what, what, what's that got to do with anything? People making fun of you. What do you care if folks make fun of you? Who are you anyway? Are you God or something? I mean, everybody got a hold of my characters. I got people making fun of me with Shoes aren't polished, you know. My fingernails aren't clean. They got wax in my ears, you know. Sometimes they can smell sweat of me after I've been out there digging the backyard or having chained clothes or something, you know. And folks, you know, make fun of. Them. Go and make fun. Nothing to me, one way or another. You take this bunch. They're so afraid if they say this thing here is the devil that the scholars will make fun of them, tell them they're not scientific and this and that. So what? That's what's wrong with these fellows here. They're afraid if they believe this passage, they're going to make fun of them. No, I will believe it. 41.1. Can't thou draw a Leviathan with a hook? No, you can't. You can draw a crocodile with a hook. You can put a dead chicken on a hook about like that. And put it there, that thing will swallow it. You can haul him right out. Or his tongue with a cord which thou lettest down. That's so uh, like fishing. Can't thou put a hook into his nose? That's like a bull. Or bore his jaw through with a thorn? That's using the thorn as an auger. And put a hole through here, and then put a, a ring in there like that. Or like a slave, bore the hole through here, and put the ring through here like this. Or bore your jaw through with a thorn, the answer is you can't. Will he make a covenant with thee? No, not this one here. Now this one here makes a covenant, but boy, what a covenant. Isaiah 28. What a covenant. 
The Bible called this thing a covenant with death and hell. Isaiah 28 in one hand, and Daniel in the other. The devil, Leviathan, does make a covenant. But it's a, a covenant with the Jews, not with just anybody. Well, I make a Daniel chapter, Daniel chapter, oh, I was going to say 8, and no 9. Daniel chapter 9. Daniel chapter 9, yeah, Daniel chapter 9, 26. This is the devil, isn't he a crocodile? Last time, will he make a covenant with thee? Yes, he will with the Jews, but a crocodile is not going to make a covenant with the Jews. Daniel 9, 26. And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. And the end thereof shall be with a flood, and the end of the war desolation are determined. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week, and the midst of weeks shall cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease, so forth and so on. He breaks the covenant. Covenant breaker. On Isaiah 28, Isaiah 28, verse 14. Isaiah 28, 14. Wherefore, hear the word of the Lord, ye scornful men that rule this people which is in Jerusalem, because you have said, We have made a covenant with death, and with hell we are at an agreement. As they sign up with the Antichrist. When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, it shall not come to us, for we have made lies our refuge, and our falsehood if we hid ourselves. Therefore, thus saith the Lord. Verse 18, your covenant with death shall be disannulled, and your agreement with hell shall not stand. But you signed a covenant with the Antichrist, and it doesn't stand. It's broken in the midst of the week. You start killing right and left. All right, Job 41. If that Antichrist is a pope, that thing is called a concordant. Concordant. And a concordant is what the, the pope signed with Hitler and Mussolini before he unleashed World War II. Job chapter 41, verse 1. People this, they don't believe it. You tell people Hitler is just a dress rehearsal for the real Holocaust to come. They don't believe it. Shake their head. Oh, it couldn't be that. Listen, Hitler is just a warming up. He only killed 6 million of them. I don't know how many are in the world today. I think it's something like 14 million of them. And the Antichrist get through. I wouldn't be surprised if you didn't have left less than 500,000 of them. Big scenes coming up. Job 41, verse uh, 4. Will he make a covenant with thee? He will with the Jew. Will thou take him for a servant forever? You won't get the devil to serve you. You'll serve him. Will thou play with him as with a bird? Not the devil you won't. Will thou bind him for thy maidens? Shall the companions make a banquet of him? Somebody does. Shall they part him among the merchants? Shall the companions make a banquet of him? Cut him up, meet him. Psalm 74. We haven't been through this in class, so you know where I'm going. You know how wild it is. You know we're not going to get anywhere where I'm going. <laughs> but this is the scripture. Psalm 70, yeah, it's angel food. Psalm 74, 14. And nowhere in the world you can figure the thing out. Psalm 74, 14. Thou breakest the heads, plural, of Leviathan in pieces, and gavest him to be meat to the people inhabiting the wilderness. Made a banquet of him. Broke the heads and the devil and the people ate him in the wilderness. Forty years in the wilderness. Wild stuff. What well, father gets that he has a time, doesn't he? You mean tell me those Jews out in the wilderness are eating crocodiles? <laughs> there aren't any crocodiles in the Sinaitic Peninsula. That thing there's a whale. How many whales are you going to catch out there in Mount Sinai and Rephidim? Crazy, crazy cockeyed stuff. The heads of Leviathan got more than one head and gave to be meat that fed on him. Now that manna was round like a flying saucer or a Catholic wafer. And it was white like a Catholic wafer. That thing was small and that thing was round like that sun disk you see in the Catholic altar. It was round like a Catholic collar on a priest. Round white. That thing tasted like coriander seed and honey. And when the sun waxed hot, it melted. And it was like the hoar frost in the ground. And when you left it around too long, 
it bred worms and stank, it must have a corruptible source. Stuff was wrong. All right, so uh, mica, mica. You say, how come Kirbaugh and Lindsay and these guys don't pick this stuff up? Because they got messed around with the King James Bible. You mess with it, pretty soon you lose the revelation. The only way for God to keep you showing you something is for you to keep believing what God said. Micah chapter 7, verse 14. Micah 7, 14. When you find Micah, raise your hand. Well, that's pretty good. Glad to see you still remember where the books in the Bible are. I've been in many a church where I asked for Micah and Habakkuk, and they didn't know what was Old or New Testament. You want to see how people find a verse quick, they find a verse, you stand and say, turn to Habakkuk 3.13, watch the shuffle boy. All right, Micah 7, verse 14. Feed thy people with what? Thy rod. That's one of the titles for the devil in uh, Isaiah. It's called the rod of God. Beat people with it. The flock of thine heritage would dwell solitary in the wood in the midst of Carmel. Let them feed in Bashan and Gilead as in the days of old, according to the days of thy coming out of the land of Egypt. Will I show him marvelous things? Revelation chapter 12. So the Jew is going to be fed again with man in the tribulation. And it's got something to do with the devil. What it got to do with the devil, I have no idea. I can draw it. And paint it, but when you do, you can't believe what you see. I've got an interesting picture at home in a Disney book, a book of Disney stories. And one of them is Prince Charming or something. He go up to the castle to get the fair maiden and the dragon. He got this dragon in his way. And that color cartoon of that thing shows this fellow coming this knight and cutting this devil with his sword. And so help me, that thing is bleeding snowflakes. There are white flakes coming to that thing where it's cut. Revelation 12, Revelation 12, here go the Jews in the wilderness. Verse 6, And the woman fled to the wilderness, where she hath a place prepared of God, that they should feed her. 1,260 days. Israel fed three and a half years. That's in the future. Revelation chapter 12, verse 14, And the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly in the wilderness to her place, where she is nourished, there's that feeding, for a time, one year, times, two years, and a half a time, half a year, three and a half years, from the face of the serpent. All right, Job chapter 41. So it's got something to do with manna, but, but you can't get it together. I never could get it together. I worked at it for years. You get this thing where the manna shows up every day except Saturday, and it comes down for 40 years in the wilderness, and then it ceases when they get in the land of Canaan. Well, you got this regulated flow of this stuff coming down, whatever it is, and then it doesn't come down again for 2,000 years, no, 2,000, 3,500 years, and then when it comes down, it comes down for an exact period of three and a half years. You can't figure out what in the world the Lord's doing. And if, so, <coughs> if it comes down, where does it come from? The Lord wounds the devil, and the devil's in outer space going up and down. Where does that stuff come from, outer space? It comes out of space. How does it get down the atmosphere? I don't know. I, don't, I can't work it out. I just know one thing. I know that snow is a type of that. Snow and sleet and hail are types of that stuff. All right, Job 41. Job 41. Uh, verse uh, 6. Shall the companions make a banquet of him? Shall they part him among the merchants? Can't thou fill his skin with barred irons? You can a crocodile. You can a whale. That's how you kill a whale. Fill his skin with barbed iron. Put a harpoon in him. Get in a whale. Or his head with fish spears. Now that thing, whatever that thing is, that thing is an aquatic animal. It's amphibian. It's marine. Look at verse 15. Scales. Look at verse uh, 31. He's in the sea. He's in the water. Look at verse 7, fish spears. Verse 1, a hook. It's an aquatic animal. That thing that's in the water. Now, years ago, about the time uh, Columbus started out to find America, 
He sailed across the ocean blue at about the time he headed for San Salvador. All the scientists of his day, who don't know anything more than they know now, scientists have always been stupid. They're just stupid in 1492 if they are now. He headed out across the ocean and somebody said, Now, Chris, when you get way out there, you're going to get to a dropping off place because the earth is flat. You can be out there where the water ends, you're going to drop off, you know what you're going to find? He says, what, there's going to be a great red dragon out there waiting to swallow you up. You know they got that thing from? They got that thing from here. But the, of course, they forgot that verse that says the earth is a circle in Isaiah, and they forgot that verse where the Lord said in that day and in that night, but day and night at the same time. But they got that one right. And when old Columbus sailed out over there and then came back, and no dragon got him, them the dumb, stupid scientists, and they were just dumb as they are now. Maybe not quite as dumb, but almost. And when he finally got back from there, somebody said, well, you see that Bible? That Bible was just a joke. There wasn't any great red dragon out there. There wasn't any dragon out there in that water. That Bible doesn't know what it's talking about. And threw it out the window. But he's out there. The thing, he's not in the Atlantic. He's not in the Pacific. He's out there. You say, what's water doing out there? It's been out there ever since Genesis 1. Turn to Genesis 1. The thing is, no scientist knows that. They don't know that because they're stupid. Genesis chapter 1. Moses knew it, and he wrote in 1900 B.C. Genesis 1, verse 1. In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. The earth was without form and void, <clears throat> darkness upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Verse 6. And God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament divide the waters which were under the firmament, and the waters which were above the firmament, it was so, and God called the firmament heaven. Verse 17. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. The sun and the moon and the stars are in the firmament. And there's water below the firmament and water above the firmament. So the devil is there. And he is in the water. And it's called the deep. Look at verse uh, 2. Darkness was upon the face of the deep. Now come back to Job 41. Look at verse 31. Job 41, 31. He maketh the deep. There it is. He maketh the deep to boil like a pot. So when they get up there, they're going right into the devil's domain, and I ain't going up, and I don't care to go up. You couldn't get me the moon for any amount of money in this world. Now, I'm not going to mess around up there because <clears throat> I don't belong up there. Psalm 115. My dominion as a man is up to where the eagle flies. When I get above where the eagle flies, I'm out of, I'm out of my dominion. Psalm 115. Folks, all that old reactionary, that old primitive, stupid, arrogant, ignorant, superstitious. Folks say, well, where we would we be today if there were people like you around, you know, when Christopher Columbus sailed out? Well, I guess uh, you'd still be having just a uh, continental war instead of intercontinental war. If you get out in Star Trek and have it out there, I guess you'll have interplanetary war instead of inter inter international war. I mean, the bigger you go, the more damage you do. That's called the power of negative thinking. Psalm 115. Verse 15, ye are blessed of the Lord which made heaven and earth, Genesis 1, 1. Watch it, the heaven, even the heaven is plural, are the Lord's, but the earth hath he given to the children of men. Our domain is here. He said, I have dominion over the fowls of heaven, so you have dominion up to where an eagle flies. I don't know how high an eagle flies, but I guess I'm in a jet at 34,000 feet, I guess I'm above where the eagle is at. And I don't appreciate even getting up there. But you take, you got no business going to the moon, Saturn and Jupiter and all that kind of stuff. You got no business up there at all. That's the Lord's. You get out there and pretty soon you're going to run into the one that's moving up and down out there. And he'll come down. He'll come down. Job 41. Job 41, verse 7. Job 41, verse 7. You know what they call them, don't you? They call them astronauts. N A U T. The rest of that word is N-A-U-T-I-C-L, nautical. You know what they call that space ship? They call it a ship. A ship. You know what they call it when they go up there? They call them airways. You see? In other words, you can't, you can't beat the book no matter what you do. The book is always so far ahead of Houston and the Space Center and Cape Kennedy, they what they're doing and where they're at. 
You remember what happened? They sent that space shuttle up. Was that two years ago or something like that? Or a year ago or something? They sent that thing up and blew all the smithereens. You know, there were more jokes about that thing than any disaster that ever happened since the sinking of Lusitania. Folks joked about that all over the country. That's a terrible thing. Most people died in that thing. They're blown to smithereens. There all kind of jokes about, you know, picnicking with the crabs and that kind of stuff. And one of the last words so-and-so said, don't touch that button and that. I heard jokes about that thing all over the country. Now, did you ever stop to think why that is? I mean, why? Some said they shouldn't have done it. Maybe they shouldn't. Everybody did it. How come they're always joking? What's funny about your relative being blown to pieces in the space shuttle? I don't think it's funny about that. Everybody made jokes about it. You know why that is? There is in human nature, innately, there is in you and me a sense of when somebody is trying to pull off a fiasco. And the American people knew when that thing went up, somebody was trying to do something just for a show. And when it blew up, it made them happy. So they joked about it. And they looked at that spaceship and they saw one Shemite and one Hamite and one Japheth in there and they said, uh-huh, somebody's trying to put through integration. Looked at that spaceship and they saw a school teacher in there. Ain't that fine. A school teacher, you know, praying before they go up. Hey, man, you're not allowed to pray in that teacher's classroom before she goes up. Fakey, fakey, fakey. And the, and the public knew it. So when it blew up, everybody got making jokes about it. Pretty terrible joke, but I thank God the American people haven't lost a sense of humor. I like some of these signs I see on cars, you know. They show that American people don't take a lot of the stuff as seriously. I saw one that said, I'll buckle up when you buckle up Bundy. <laughs> Amen. My favorite is nuke the baby whales. <laughs> Now, you know what the next one's going to be? That's going to be a big push against drugs to make you think Jason Jesse Jackson's a candidate for president. That's going to be the next one. All that stuff, the press is always working on you. They've got these little projects they're always working on. Don't be a litter bug. You know, buckle up. Now, when you leave the airplane, they say, fasten your seatbelts, and when you deport, we hope you'll fasten your seatbelt on your way home. And your father's mustache. I don't fasten a buckle in a plane. I leave mine loose. I put a book across my lap so they can't see it and leave it unstrapped. So how long did you do that? 41 years. You say, what comes of it? I don't know what comes of it. You come down and wreck a, a, a seat belly ain't going to save you. It's going to rip your body in half and tear your spinal column off. Who are you trying to kid, man? When you come down on a plane head on, you know why the stewardess sit facing the tail? Because they're protected and you're not. Don't kid me, man. The way to get safe in a plane, that thing coming down, get in your seat and turn back and put your back on the front seat ahead of you and prop your feet on your seat behind you. You're not going to do that with a belt buckle on. <laughs> Some of you folk got the funniest look. <laughs> 41, 41, verse uh, 7. Canst thou fill his skin with barbed irons, or his head with fist spears? Lay thine hand upon him. Remember the battle. Do no more. So if you want to know what the devil's like, just touch him one time. Remember what a contest it was, and then do no, don't do any more. Don't get engaged. Just, you know, one light touch will do. Don't get engaged. Don't step in there and tangle with him. Remember the battle. You remember the last tussle you had with him? You want to know him? Not me. Lay your hand upon him. Remember the battle. Do no more. Why? Well, verse 10. Is that thing? None are so fierce that dare stir him up. Folks talking about raising the devil. Don't, don't ever try to raise the devil. Stir the devil. None are so fierce that dare stir him up. Who then is able to stand before me? God talking. Lord says, if you can't stir him up, you want to stand before me? Lord said, I made him. Look at verse 11. Who hath prevented me that I should repay him? Whatever is on the old heaven is mine. The Lord said, I made him. All right, back to verse 8. Lay thine hand upon him, remember the battle, do no more. In the New Testament, he says, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. In the New Testament, he says, we are those that put our trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, or rejoice in the Lord Jesus Christ, and put no confidence in the flesh. Lay thine hand upon him, remember the battle, do no more. 
Behold, the hope of him is in vain. The devil has no hope. He lives and dies without hope. His whole life is hopeless. The hope of him is in vain. Shall not one be cast down even at the sight of him? If you could see him, you'd faint. Not just like uh, the Lord took the scales off your eye this morning and opened your eyes like he did those Elisha and the young man. He saw a chariot and the horse of fire round about. If the Lord actually took you out on a starry summer night and opened your eyes and you saw that thing, whatever that thing is. Verse 9. Behold, the hope of them is in vain. Shall not one be cast down even the sight of it? And you see him, you'd pass out. That's how to keep a cobra from biting you. Bow down in front of it. Cobra rise up. You don't want it to bite you. You bow down. And it crawls over you. I'd be just about bad to get in bed, I guess. <laughs> and and, and in, in India, you know what they do? They have this dance where a girl comes out, dances for a cobra, and then kisses it. Charm, then kisses it, and backs off. No, thank you. Ten. None is so fierce that dare stir him up. Who then is able to stand before me? Nobody. If God will enable you to stand before him, you couldn't stand him even in the judgment. Who hath prevented me that I should repay him? The Lord said, I'll give him what he has coming to me, and you won't stop me. Whatever is under the whole heaven is mine. Now, you know why he's putting so much on Job about the devil? Because it was the devil that got permission from God to mess Job up. Now, he's going this stuff, and the Lord is telling Job in so many words, the devil's more powerful than you are, and he's the one that's been working on you, and I'm more powerful than he is. He got his permission to what he did from me. Verse 12, I will not conceal his parts, nor his power, nor his calmly proportion. Then you can find them. I will not conceal his parts. Then you can see them. I will not conceal his power. So it's demonstrated. I will not conceal his calmly proportion. So you know what he looks like. From what? From the chapter you're reading. Crocodile. Crocodile. <laughs> Thirteen. Who can discover the face of his garment? The opening in it. Nobody. Who can come near to him with his double bridle? You can bridle any animal in the world, put some kind of a hitch on him, and you can't the devil. Who can open the doors of his face? His teeth are terrible round about. His scales are his pride, shut up together with a closed seal. One is so near to another, no air can come between them. They are joined one to another, they stick together, they cannot be sundered. Go back to 40 and look at verse 19. Dividing asunder between soul and spirit, joints and marrow. Only way you can pierce the devil is with the word. Job 41, 17, they are joined one to another. They stick together. They cannot be sundered. My sneezings, and that thing there is old English for your nostrils, the opening in the nose. My sneezings, a light doth shine, like a jack o' lantern with a light inside shine out through the nose and eyes. It's like he has fire inside him, a furnace inside him, and the thing is showing out through the eyes and through the nose. By his niece, a light doth shine. His eyes are like the eyelids of the morning, like the sun. Out of his mouth go burning lamps, and sparks of fire leap out. Out of his nostrils go a smoke. As of a seething pot or cauldron, his breath kindles cold. And the cold lights up, don't it? And the cold lights up. That's where you get it from. In the Bible, an amazing book. Catches this crocodile. <laughs> Ear of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father, you will do. Mm -mm, I'll take cigarettes away from you. You know, you got tobacco from you got from American Indian. You know, where he usually using his peace pipe, sitting around smoking, going through his religious ritual. And Paul said the thing that the Gentiles sacrifice, they don't sacrifice to God, they sacrifice to the devil. There's a place to go to breathe smoke if you want to breathe it. But it's not in heaven. There's a place that says the smoke of their torment is sentence. Why would a guy, why do you ever stop thinking why God would do even fool with cigarettes? 
I mean, I, I fooled with them. I quit smoking them after a while. I went to a pipe. And I found one for cigars. Well, just as bad. But you wonder why in the world, whatever leaves you to breathe, you smoke. I mean, when you have a brush pile and burn leaves, you stand right in the smoke and inhale. <laughs> but you know how they got you. You know, you saw adults doing it, didn't you? You want to be an adult. You want to be a grown-up, and the grown-ups do it. So I'm a, when you get a kid, you ain't a fool. They make a fool out of himself. You know, some of you dumb Christians, if you make a bigger fool out of yourself for the Lord's sake as you have for the devil's sake, you'd have revival all the time. Haven't the devil got you to do a lot of stupid things? 19. Out of his mouth go burning lamps and sparks of fire leap out. Out of his nostrils goeth smoke as out of a seething pot or cauldron. His breath kindles coals and a flame goes out of his mouth. Tobacco is a filthy weed from the devil it doth proceed. It burns your finger, stains your fingers, burns your clothes, makes a chimney of your nose. <laughs> 21. We'll close here. His breath kindleth coals and a flame goeth out of his mouth. All right, we'll stop there, verse 21. Yes, sir. All right, Job 41. Now, Job 41 is a description of Satan. The 34 verses in the chapter, and every verse is talking about the devil. And so all the new Bibles say it's talking about a crocodile or a hippopotamus. And uh, when you consider it, it's a fantastic, because whatever this thing is, it breathes fire, verse 19 and 20, which a crocodile, an alligator, and a hippopotamus do not. And then in verse 34, this animal, whatever he is, he's called the king over all the children of pride, who is not even true of animals. Among animals, what's called the king of the beasts? Right. It's a lion, not a crocodile. And then we read in verse 34, he is king over all the children of pride. There's no doubt about who it is, it's Satan. But you see, your modern expositor is so shot through with infidelity, even the fundamentalists, that they can't believe what they read. Who is going to believe in a red, fire-breathing dragon that really is there? See? Who but Ruckman and a bunch of nuts that follow him, see? And who's going to, who's going to believe in the satyrs? Isaiah 34. And who's going to believe in unicorns? Psalm 22. No, no, no respectable Bible scholar. Of course not. I believe the book. And the Bible says Leviathan has more than one head in Psalm 74, and Leviathan is called a dragon in Isaiah chapter 27. He's called a great red dragon in Revelation chapter 12. He's an aquatic monster that represents the aquatic and marine class of the fifth cherub over the throne. And when the book speaks, they can shut the mouth. There's nothing to me. <coughs> Folks say, you ever seen him? i never seen Jesus Christ. You believe in Jesus Christ, don't you? Well, that's... This thing that God described, the Lord said about this animal here, look at verse 12. I will not conceal his parts, then they're revealed. Nor his power, then it's revealed. Nor his calmly proportion, then it's revealed. If the God said, I won't conceal it. All right, verse 22. In his neck remain a strength, and sorrow is turned into joy before him. Sorrow is turned into joy before him. People uh, worship the devil. They get happy about the devil. They rejoice in the devil. Now, if you, didn't, if you didn't know that, if you'd been here a couple of weeks back when Brother Castle showed you that stuff on rock music, you'd know that in the case of Satan, sorrow is turned into joy. I mean, those kids that dance that stuff and fool around that kind of stuff, every one of those kids is about two or three inches from blowing his brains out, and then the devil shows up and they start uh, bumping and grinding and belly dancing and have whoopee and having a big time. Come to Proverbs 15. I'll show you a verse that goes with it. Proverbs 15, 21. When he says sorrow is turned into joy, he's not talking about weeping endures for a night and joy comes in the morning. He's not talking about the kind of joy you get from the Lord Jesus Christ showing up. He's talking about the joy that devil worshippers get when the devil shows up. Proverbs 15, 21. Folly is what? Joy. joy to him that is destitute of wisdom. See that? It's that kind of joy. Folly, foolishness, is joy. The aim is death to the wisdom. All right, Job chapter 41, verse, uh, verse 22. Sorrow is turned into joy before him. The flakes of his flesh, they're called scales in verse 15, are joined together. They are firm in themselves. They cannot be moved. There is something that can get between them. You're told in verse uh, 16, the scale is so close together, no air can come between them. They join one another, they stick together, and cannot be 
sundered. The word of God is quick and powerful and sharp and a two the sword dividing asunder. You see? So that's when you attack the devil and you may have need to and time to and cause to. You have to know the book. You have to know the word. Now let me say this. If, you, if you're not going to learn the word, you're not going to make an effort to memorize the word, you are not going to give the devil any trouble at all. The devil going to take you and just wrap you and knock you around the stump and beat you to death all your life. I don't know how many times in a youth camp I've seen a young man come down crying and I've dealt with him and prayed this. I've been through this scene so many times I've lost track. And the fellow would say, well, I, I got right in camp last year, Brother Ruffman. I went back, got in bad company and got in trouble and I'm all messed up again. And I'll tell the kid, I say, did you memorize that verse I told you to memorize? And he says, what verse? <laughs> I said, 1 Corinthians 10, 13. He didn't. He didn't. And he'll fall until he does. The verse says, there is no temptation taking you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, not suffering to be tempted above that you're able, but will with the temptation provide a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. Now, you have to learn that. You have to learn some verses like, my God shall supply your need through his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Thou will keep him with perfect peace whose mind is stayed upon thee, because he trusts in thee. Trust the Lord and do good, and verily thou shalt dwell in the land, thou shalt be fed. You've got to get that stuff. Because the, the devil will attack. And when he attacks, you have to have something to strike back with. When the devil attacks uh, the Lord Jesus Christ in Luke chapter 4, he says, It is written, 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 it is written. Do you know what's written? You can't, if you can't quote it, how do you know it's written? All right, verse uh, 18. By his sneezings. That's old English. Our word sneezing comes from that. It's an old English for the nostrils and the nose. Another time he says nostril, by his sneezings is the opening in the nose. A light doth shine. That thing got a fire inside it. That fire-breathing dragon has a fire inside the in, inside that thing. So like hell, there's fire inside the earth. And his eyes are like the eyelids of the morning, like sun, like the sun. Out of his mouth go burning lamps and sparks of fire leap out. Out of his nostrils go a smoke as out of a seething potter cauldron. The fire-breathing dragon. The red fire breathing dragon. And if you saw him, you'd pass out cold. You'd faint. You think you're going crazy. His breath kindleth coal, the flame goeth out of his mouth. In his neck remaineth strength, and sorrow is turned into joy before him. The flakes of his flesh are joined together, they are firm in themselves, they cannot be moved. His heart is as firm as a stone, yea, as hard as a piece of nether, that's the lower, millstone. Hard hearted. Why he said, uh, Beware lest any of you become hardened to the deceitfulness of sin. And the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart. Who hath hardened himself against God and prospered? Doesn't do you any good to fight against God. You just break your fool neck. I, I get thinking about it sometimes almost laugh. You know, think about a man, you know, fighting on God, taking God on. What a joke, man. I mean, if the whole world took him on, what, what would that come to? Suppose you had four billion people that all got together. And so we're going to resist God and fight against God. What a joke, man. Four billion ants crawling around here in an ant heap. And the Lord made the sun. What if the Lord, what if the Lord just got tired of you? I mean, men are much, God is much more lenient with men than they are with him. A lot of nations have abolished God. And God hadn't abolished them yet. But suppose the Lord just said, I had enough of this man. I think I'll just suck you back into the sun. So the Lord just took the whole planet and just drew it back into the sun. The scientist said it came out from there. I don't believe it did, but if it did, how about just sucking it back in? What would happen to four billion people? You'd be roast marshmallows, man. Man fighting against God. You fool fight against you can't fight against God. You better submit. You better submit. So I don't like to submit. I don't either. I don't care for it a bit. <laughs> But you, you, sometimes you're compelled to. You have to. Might as well make the most of it. Verse 24. His heart is as firm as a stone. Hard-hearted. Yea, as hard as a piece of nether millstone. That's the bottom millstone you grind the meal on. It's a big round piece of cement. About uh, three feet in diameter and about uh, six inches thick. That's what that woman dumped off that tower and got Abimelech and, and bashed his head in with. 
When he raiseth up himself, the mighty are afraid. That's why the heathen sacrifice the devil are afraid of him. That's why the witch doctors go through those incantations out in the jungle. The idea is if we don't placate the God, he'll do this and that to us, and the God they're placating is Satan. When he raise up himself, the mighty are afraid. Now look at this. By reason of breakings, they break their flesh. Breakings, they purify themselves. All right, for this come the first kings. This is called masochism and abnormal psychology. Uh, first Kings 18. And in the Catholic Church, it's called penance. First Kings 18, verse 26. They try to purify themselves and get rid of their sin by abusing themselves, punishing themselves. First Kings 18, 26. And they took the bullock which was given them, and they dressed it, and called in the name of Baal from morning till noon, saying, O Baal, hear us. But there was no voice, nor any that answered. And they leaped upon the altar which was made. And it came to pass at noon that Elijah mocked them. That's making fun of somebody's religion, you understand? That's ridiculing somebody's religion. Mocked them and said, Cry aloud, for he's a god. Either he is talking or pursuing, or he's in a journey, or perhaps he sleeps and must be awakened. And they cried aloud and cut themselves. After their manner with knives and lancets till the blood gushed out of them, trying to purify themselves to get the prayer answered, do penance, pay for the sins. They do that in the Philippine Islands. They do that in Spain. They do that in South America. They crawl around on the hands and knees till their knees are bloody. They uh, carry wooden crosses, sometimes nail themselves to them. They go down the street to whip themselves with leather whips where blood runs off them. They're trying to purify themselves. Should my tears forever flow, should my zeal no languor know, all for sin could not atone, thou must save and thou alone. In my hand no price I bring, simply to thy cross I cling. What good going to do to you shed your blood? Your blood ain't no good. I suppose you dump it out all over the ground, you know, dump out five quarts, what you going to do with it? It isn't any good. You say, no, it's no good because it kills you. You know why your mom and daddy died? Your grandmothers and grandfathers died? The blood wasn't any good. You know why your great-grandfather died? His blood wasn't. You know why you're going to die? Your blood ain't any good. So what good does it do to shed it? Verse 25, when he raised up himself, the mighty are afraid. By reason of breaking, they purify themselves. The sword of him that layeth at him cannot hold. So say, lay it on. Lay on Macduff, I believe is the thing from Macbeth. They lay up the sword that layeth at him. The fellow draw the sword and goes after the devil. It can't hold, can't cut him, can't get in him. The spear can't pierce him. The dart, or the habergen. And the habergen is a, a chest of, a chest of mail or, or armor with a spike in the front of it. The Germans put it on the helmet and put the spike on top of the helmet. Can't, can't ram him. You can't pierce him. He has seen iron as straw. Don't you see now why Paul said what he said? He said the weapons of our warfare are not what? Carnal, see? Because you can't fight the devil with bullets and machine guns and bombs and M16s and M14s and 205s and 155s. You can't do it. He has seen iron as straw and brass as rotten wood. The arrows cannot make him flee. Sling stones are turned with him into stubble. You can't fight the devil in the way you fight a man. Oh, some of you Christians, you've heard this year in and year out, and year in and year out, and year in and year out, and you ain't got the message yet. <laughs> You're not just up against people. You don't get it. The Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rule of darkness, world, against spiritual wickedness, high places. Wherefore, take you the whole arm of God that you may withstand, having done all, stand, stand there, for having your loin girded about with truth, the best way of righteous, having feet, child, the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith and the helmet of salvation, the sword of spirit with the word of God, praying all prayer and supplication. And he comes down to the lot of stuff he's given you is talking about spiritual warfare. And you're up against, if it's just people, then any problem. I mean, uh, dog eat dog, uh, quick in the dead, doing others, you have to do unto you. Just people under, against people ain't no problem. Just get there the mostest with the firstest with the mostest and blow the head off or they blow your head off. No problem to it. <laughs> but you're not up against that. You're up against the devil. And you're not, you're not going to stand in the battle. You're going to go. They're going to blow you out. 
when the pressure gets on if you don't know that book and answer with that book. It, it looks for a while, it looks for a while like the Word of God loses. See? For a while. And then in come the ship. Job chapter 41, verse 27. Or 20, 29. Darts are counted as stubble, the laughing at the shaking of a spear. He laugheth at the shaking of a spear. Rattle a spear at him. Say, look, I'm going to get you. He'll laugh. Sharp stones are under him. I don't know what that is. One place in the Bible said he walked up and down the stones of fire before he fell. The things upon the mire. I know what that is. You say, you're kind of stupid, aren't you? Yes, I am. <laughs> There's some things I don't know about at all. I don't know what that verse means. He spread it. Now, I can tell you some fellows who do. The commentators. You buy your commentator, and take exactly those sharp, pointed things on upon the mire and all that kind of stuff. Because he got him a crocodile. Swim around the mud, you see. I don't know what that means. Folks, aren't you kind of saying to Mitch, you're stupid? No, not at all. Some place I'm real stupid. You wouldn't catch me in the stock market. The stock market, I wouldn't be a bull or a bear. I'd be a jackass. <laughs> Folks, if the Dow Jones average is down, what is the Dow Jones average? I, I couldn't get that thing. If you stayed up talking about all night about that thing, I could. The Dow Jones is up. The Dow Jones is down. How about the Bill Smith? How's it doing? Is Bill Smith up or down in the middle of where is he? I don't know. Whether, the market is bullish today. I don't know what that means. The market is bearish today. Got no clothes on, I guess. Something like that. I got a New Yorker magazine that explained that whole thing. I read it through four times. By one bunch are selling everything, other bunch is keeping everything. And I never could figure the thing out. I got through it. I couldn't figure out what they were doing. I can't even figure out what they're doing when they're not doing anything. I mean, the, you know, the, the shares, the shares, the shares. That word share, I don't know, shares. And selling shares and buying low and selling high. I don't know. I'll tell you, I know. I know in 1929, yeah. <laughs> my daddy went down to the bank. And he'd been making about uh, $2 an hour, which is pretty good money back in those days. And he went to the bank to get his money, and there wasn't any money there. And he went to the savings account, and somebody said he should have put money in savings. He'd have some for a rainy day. And a rainy day came with the savings account, and there wasn't any money in the savings account. And he couldn't get nothing, and he went down to 50 cents an hour. And I know that because when he hired me to work for him, he hired me to work for him at 20 cents an hour which was a family affair. That's giving your boy a break. See, that isn't, wasn't regulation wages. And that's giving the, a kid a chance to a salary of a full-grown man, 20 cents an hour. And I know that. I know that. I'll tell you something else I know. I know if you keep putting air in the balloon, it's going to bust. I know that. I know if you're down there at the bank, if, you, if that uh, debt is $1 trillion, $2 trillion, $3 trillion, and they see your deposit is guaranteed for $10,000, I know when a man is $3 trillion in debt, he can't guarantee you $10,000. You know some of you folks, you conduct your business like the government conducts its business, you'd be in jail. You know that, don't you? You know that, don't you? You'd be in jail. Well, print your own money. They do. <laughs> Job 41. What does verse 30 mean? I haven't got an idea in this world. 31, he maketh the deep to boil like a pot. I know what that is. That's the deep in Genesis 1. This animal is going up and down to the water. Therefore, if you want to get a type of this animal, you wouldn't take a crocodile. If you want to get a type of this animal, you'd get a whale. You'd get a whale. He maketh the deep to boil like a pot. He maketh the sea like a pot of ointment. Then the thing's in the water and moving up and down to the water. I guess if you left a path behind him, you could see it'd be like the Milky Way. Verse 32, he maketh the path to shine after him, prosperous. The thing's an animal. It isn't like a crocodile in Mary Pond. It's like a whale in the, on the sea at night with phosphorus in the water. He maketh the path to shine after him. One would think the deep to be hoary. Only is for white. One would think the deep to be white. It's phosphorus in the trail to the water. Upon earth is not his like who is made without fear. 
Imagine calling that a crocodile. Upon earth there's not his like who is made without fear. The devil doesn't fear anybody. He doesn't fear me, doesn't fear you, doesn't fear God, doesn't fear Christ. Made without fear. You get the place where you fear nothing, then you're in rough shape. You're in rough shape. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. As a pastor in Isaiah, it says, I'll look to this man that is of a humble and contrite spirit and that trembleth at my word. I've often thought about that verse. I think back to the days I went to college and went to school and tried to learn the Bible like some of you tried here for three years. I thought myself, in the, in the six years I went to Bob Jones University, did I ever sit under one man, one man that would tremble at something God said? And there wasn't one man in that school. Six years. I ever heard of it ever trembling anything God said. No matter what he said. Whatever he said, the fellow just corrected. He didn't like it. Verse 33. Upon earth there is not his like who is made without fear. He beholdeth all high things. Then he's up. Up with the cherubim, seraphim, the galaxies. He's over your head. Not out in the Pacific and the Atlantic. He's over your head. He both all high things. Paul says spiritual wickedness in high places. He is a king over all the children of pride. If you're self-righteous and stuck in yourself, that's your daddy. That's your daddy. Nothing like a Bible to clear up a college education.